This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this lecture is on Islamic finance, uh, which is very much a repeat of um, what you should have studied before in the earlier uh, financial management exam. Uh, and it's an area where, certainly for the time being, you can't expect calculations, any numerical questions, but you are expected to be aware of what it is we're talking about and uh, uh, a few terms um, as are written in the uh, chapter, and as I'll um, chat through reasonably quickly. Um, I say you can't really expect calculations, uh, certainly for the time being, although do read the technical article on the ACCA website uh, where the, there is uh, an example. Uh, but the whole point about this is that um, under uh, Islamic law uh, you're not allowed to make money out of money. Uh, you're not allowed to charge interest, and they call it a reba. But um, I better apologise right from the beginning as like we go through my pronunciation is probably appalling, um, but sorry, there it is. Uh, but the point is, you're not allowed to charge interest, you're not allowed to make money out of money. And so, you know, the conventional way of borrowing in um, Western countries, uh, you know, the bank gives you a loan, more often than not, it's secured on assets. You're paying interest, but the bank's taking little or no risk. If the um, if it's secured on assets or an individual, you know, if you buy a house in the UK, you borrow money from the bank, but it's secured on the house. And if something goes wrong and you can't repay the interest, then the bank takes the house, sells it, and gets their money back. So they're taking minimal, if any, risk. They're purely making money out of money, and that's not allowed. Uh, under Islamic law, and in fact, out of interest, it wasn't allowed uh, in Christianity either until uh, a couple of hundred years ago. So, it makes things a bit tricky because um, Islamic companies need finance, obviously, but they can't raise it in the conventional Western ways. They can't simply uh, borrow money and pay interest on it. Uh, and so, more and more of the, uh, certainly the big banks, as well as, pro uh, in the West, as well as providing conventional finance, as we deal with in all the rest of these notes, uh, they also provide uh, finance that complies with Islamic law. They need to make money, obviously. If they're lending money, they need to get money in some way. But ways of being able to earn without uh, specifically charging interest. Um, the ways you need to be aware of, the first is slightly different, but if I go through the list, the first, well, here's where my pronunciation is probably appalling, but Murubaha. Uh, sorry, I have to cheat, because I can't even remember the spelling properly. Uh, but this um, is slightly different from the others we're coming to. Um, as I've written, it's effectively a credit sale, whereas in Western, in normal, that's unfair, in, in Western finance, you sell goods on credit, and quite often you may charge interest um, if they're delayed paying. Well, again, you can't simply charge interest, so that's an easy one. Uh, instead of charging interest, they agree a higher price. So instead of saying the price is 100 but we'll charge you interest uh, if you pay it after more than a month, we agree in advance. Ah, the price will be 110 or something. A higher price and then we don't add interest on later. However, um, that's very much a one-off. That's not really providing finance in the normal way. If we carry on, um, IARA uh, is effectively a lease. Uh, <coughs> so, 
that's not a problem. You're not specifically charging interest. It may affect the uh, lease rental. But I buy the asset, I'll lease it to you. And at the end of the lease, depending on the agreement, uh, I might retain the asset or it might be agreed that you buy it off me. And all right, I've already said the, the lease rental in a sense is including interest, but it's not specifically being charged. Uh, the next one over the page, Mudaraba. Uh, equity finance. Uh, but here, it's very important as to who has the risk involved. And uh, it is like equity finance. I, as investor, provide the capital. It's like having shares in the company. I have a business partner, you, who actually runs the business, and we share the profits. So I'm not entitled to any sort of fixed dividend, like preference shares, which effectively be like interest. Uh, we share the profits between us. But importantly, I'm the one who's provided the finance. I bear the risk. Any losses are attributable to me. So that's fine. You know, I'm entitled to a share of the profits, but I must bear the risk. Uh, again, if things go wrong, it's me as the provider of finance who loses. If things go well, we share. Uh, Mushiraka is more like a partnership. Where both of us provide capital and expertise, so we both run it together. Uh, again, we share the profits. We agree in advance how we're going to share them. So it's not interest, I'm entitled as provider to a share of the profits. Uh, but this time, losses. Losses are shared between us as well, depending on how much capital we put in. It's in the same ratio as the capital that's provided. Uh, finally, those two are a bit like share capital, but the final one, uh, Sukuk, it's more like debt finance, and here it is a bit trickier, obviously. Normal debt finance, the provider of the capital, then receives interest, which isn't allowed. So the way it works here is there has to be an underlying tangible asset. So an example, uh, as part of the business, um, we might buy a property... That property is going to earn us rent. Uh, and that rental income will be shared between the people who provided the finance for the property. So we buy a property, we issue certificates, just like bonds. But instead of those certificates entitling you to fixed interest each year, they entitle you to a share of the income from that property. So it's like getting the interest, but it's not guaranteed in the same way. The income you're getting is your share of the income from the property. Um, somebody will manage it, uh, the property, and distribute the income. And of course, you are taking the risk. If for any reason the income fails, then you're not getting anything. Uh, and, of course, the income isn't a guaranteed fixed level. So that is effectively similar to buying bonds. Uh, but when I hope I made it clear, instead of getting interest, you're getting a share. Each certificate gets a share of the income from the property.